joy or happiness, success or failure, peace or dismay. The foundations of our life rest on the words we receive. A word of hope and guidance, translated from the Temple of Solomon in Brazil. You are listening to a word of faith with Bishop Macedo. Hello, my dear friends. May God may shine His light and lit up your understanding so you may understand His word and His will for your life. And if you are wise, you will obey. If you are not wise, you will reap the fruits of what you are sowing. But if you do understand God's will for your life, and then you have courage in order to apply it and to exercise it and execute it, God's will in your life, so then you can be sure, you can be certain that hell cannot come against you. Now, this word here that I'm sharing with you, is very important. And the Apostle Peter said, humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. In God's time or in due time. Very powerful. And continue saying and reading, cast all your care upon him because he cares for you. So this is wonderful. God, he cares for us. This is powerful. And then the word continues. Peter continued writing because he was talking first here about our relationship with God, he also says about the traps, the traps that the devil plans against all those who are of God. He continues writing, be sober, be sober and watchful. Be sober, it's to be balanced, to have balance because in life, you need to have balance in everything. Everything in life, we must have balance. The intelligent faith is a balanced faith. So you have to use your intelligent faith. You have to use your intelligent faith with wisdom, with discernment on God's word, so that you may reap the fruits because if you do not use faith with balance, you will fall, even though you may be in faith, because you lost balance. God gave us, for example, two legs, right? So that we can walk with balance, because our body needs to be in, in, in balance in order for us to be able to walk, run, exercise, and move throughout this world. So if our body needs to be balanced. Imagine our faith. When a faith is unbalanced, so then a person is fanatic, which is the case of so many we find out there. Those who are fanatics. Fanatics is a person who does not stop to think. They do not stop to think on what or how they have been believing. And then they reap the fruits of their fanatism. So, Peter wrote saying, be sober and watchful. So, those who are balanced, they are watchful, they are aware of their surroundings, they are aware so that they may not fall into temptation. So, be sober and watchful. So, be balanced and watchful because your adversary, the devil, he's not an adversary 
to those who belong to him. No. Those who belong to him, they are already under Satan's dominion. But what the devil wants to do is to remove God's glory that you have, that you who are faithful, you, you have a person who is righteous, a person who is with integrity, who loves discipline, applies and lives a disciplined life. You have that you have time for everything to eat, a time to you arrange your life according because you are intelligent and you are of faith and you have this balance in life. So what how does the devil work? He walks your adversary, the devil walks around. He walks around so he cannot touch those who are of God. The devil cannot touch you or me who are of God, but he walks around. Why does he walk around? It is written here, Peter wrote here, the devil walks around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So, why the devil stays around those who are faithful, those who are of God? What does he want? Since he cannot touch those who are of God, the devil cannot touch. So then, he waits and he goes around watching. For example, the devil, he is walking around, he is around, walking around me 24-7 just to see where I have fault or where I have a mistake or I have or, or I have some kind of tendency. For example, if I am, if I tend to vanity, so then he will set up a trap with vanity so that he can take me, trap me. If, for example, I am a person who tends to deceive or adultery, so then he will bring people who are of his, women who are of his, to try, to try and trap me into adultery. If I am a person who has no refer, I have, for example, I am a, a glutton. I eat more than what my stomach can handle. So then he will use, he will present a trap according to my glutton. So then pay attention. The devil, he presents traps, traps that are set up. He cannot touch you, right? But he can bring the traps. He can set up the traps for you to fall into. Like Abraham, for example. Abraham, everybody knows about Abraham. Abraham was a man of faith, a man of God, a servant of, a true servant of God who was faithful, loyal, a friend, a God's friend. But Abraham, he also fell into a trap. When did he fall into a trap of the devil? Because the devil saw that Sarah was barren and time was running out and she was getting older. So the devil blew in Sarah's mind and said, Sarah, why not bring forth children to Abraham through your servant? Hagar, so beautiful, you can bring children through her. God will make of both of you a great nation. But he didn't say it was going to come out from you. Exactly. But God had said that it was from Abraham. There will be a great nation. And when he was talking about Abraham, he was also talking to Sarah because they were one body, one flesh, one, per, one couple in faith. And the devil used Sarah to instigate, to come to Abraham and give him that idea. Have a child with my servant, Hagar. And Abraham met, met his obedience and 
you know, because Abraham was in love with Sarah, and whatever Sarah, and whatever Sarah said, he would do. And since she could not bear children, so then she could use the servant, and this was how it would it, it was. They could use the servant, and Abraham fell into that trap and brought forth a child called brought the child called Ishmael and Hagar. And that child was a trap. It was a trap for Sarah because after that decision, Sarah was now repented and she had fallen into that trap. So even Abraham, with all his commu uh, communion and friendship with God or his intimacy with God, even though with all that, he also fell into the devil's trap. So when Peter wrote here saying, be sober and watchful, friends, you can be filled with the Holy Spirit. But if you do not be watchful and sober, you may fall. I can be filled with the Holy Spirit, but if I do not be sober and watchful, I will fall as well. So we have to be sober, meaning balanced. I have, I must be balanced with my faith so that we may not be driven by things that are too easy because Sarah brought an easy way to make a child. And since I can't bear children, use my servant. So that was an easy, easy way out. So he goes around, the devil walks around just examining your very need. So if you are a person who wants, for example, to be rich, you want to make a lot of money, you have this ambition. So the devil knows that your tendency, although you are Christian, you want to be rich. So he will bring an opportunity for you, an opportunity that is very easy. He, the devil, will make things easy for you. And obviously, you will be given to it because you will think, this is of God. God is blessing me. I pray and God is giving me. And sometimes we think it is of God and it's not. And let me tell you this. Yesterday I have be began, I began speaking about my experience which I almost, almost fell into the devil's trap. I was young and I wanted to get married because I, I had the Holy Spirit. I wanted to do the work of God. So I was looking now for a partner, a person that would be my partner to help me to save souls. And the devil was aware of that. The devil was aware of it. And he was waiting until one day I was reading the Bible and then I read a, a verse that Jesus said in John 15, 7, he says, if you are in me and my words are in you, ask anything you want and it will be done. And you know what I did? Ah, I put that word of God, I opened the Bible in that page I showed God's word, I said, Lord, I want this person for me. You know when a person is blind, I want, I want her, it's, I don't know if it's your will, but it's my will. I didn't say it like that, but with my desire, the deep desire that I, re that I had, made me use God's own word to demand from God a promise that he had given. And actually, it came to me. God allowed it to come. But, while we were dating, that did not even last. It didn't even last a long time, that relationship. We, we almost got married because it took about maximum four months. Four months. It was quickly. It's God's will and I'm going to get married and that's it. 
and I was doing everything. And I, I went on. I bought furniture, everything. She worked as well. So we put all our money together and we began to invest in our future. And what happened? Inside of me, within me, in my mind, in my conscience, there was a little doubt in regards to if that person was or not to be my wife. I still had that question. Is she really of God? Is she really the one God wants for me? And I was growing. That doubt was growing. It was developing. My faith, my faith on God's word was strong. It is written. I asked, God gave me. So why doubt? <laughs> but when we are naive, when we are a child in faith, even with faith, we can end up falling into, into the devil's trap. It was like I was slumbering falling asleep but because God is merciful to me and to everyone God has a great mercy for me he was merciful and patient and finally there was a sign he gave me a sign that that marriage was not from him and that sign came also through one word one word that she told me. She gave me one word, and that word right there was the final. It, it tore the veil, and I could see what she truly was. And right there, I said, enough. I was already, I, was, I had already proposed, everyone already knew of the, the wedding. I said, my God. I, I say, Lord, if you are in me and my words are in you, now I ask, Lord, I want, her, I want you to remove this obstacle, this stone, this trap from my life. I don't know how I'm going to do because I'll be put to shame before all the other people, family members, her family, the church, the pastors. And I didn't know what to do, but I know what I need to do. So I asked God for help, but let your will be done. But when I demanded in the second time, the same promise, if you are in me and my words in you, you ask anything you want. In the second time, I said, God, let your will be done, not mine. And I thank God for that because everything was done calmly, there was nothing, there was no ordeal, and we came to the conclusion that it wasn't God's will, and we obeyed that, and God also convinced her as well, just as he had convinced me, and we broke, and we did not get married, so friends, see how the devil is trickery, he knew I was single, he knew I was looking for a person of the church. She was also baptized with the Holy Spirit. She wasn't just of the church. She was also faithful, loyal. She was of God. But she was not compatible with me. And it was not God's will. Although she was of the church, of the same church, same branch, we had the same faith, but the incompatibility with me and me with her did not allow for us to be together in that marriage. And that's why the apostle Peter, he knew this. He knew what to be sober and watchful or to have this balance in faith. He knew or how he needed to be watchful because he also fell. He also fell because he denied Jesus three times. So he knew. He could have spoken these words because he also lived it. He said, the devil 
is our adversary. He is my adversary and yours. He is the adversary of those who are of God. And these are the ones that the devil wants to destroy. And he's walking around just looking for a small weakness that we may show and we'll lean on and then he will set up the trap against us. For example, a person who wants to be rich, the devil will bring with many easy way of making money like Bitcoin and, and any sort of new currency that is coming out. That right there is just a small trap. A trap to get the fools, to get those that have not been wise in their faith, that they think that to walk with God is only to take possession and just take advantage of the opportunities so that they may take possession of great things. God is great, friends. God is great and powerful. And he knows of our needs. And according to our need, according to our need, according to what we need, he will add to our lives. If you truly serve God, then you don't need to desire to be rich because he will make you rich. But he can only make you rich when you have when you have the head to handle those riches so that you may not lose yourself like normally people end up losing themselves because of their rich riches so we are coming to the end but we will return and we will continue speaking more about this subject because I want you to be watchful. Just as the devil walk around, you need to be walking around as well. He does not do it against those who are already his, but those who are of God. So be sober, be wise, have balance, use your faith with wisdom, use your faith according to God's will, for God he will, if God loves, God loves, and if you believe in him, you will have faith to give up your will, to do his will, and to be a person who is blessed. God bless all of you. Amen. Hi, my name is Amisha, and before I started Universal Church, I had severe depression and anxiety. I used to wake up in the middle of the night with these bad anxiety attacks, couldn't catch my breath, I couldn't focus in school, depression, I was just sad and I couldn't find anything to make me happy, I didn't know what was the cause of it, it was just affecting my entire life, I couldn't really make friends and all that stuff. During my depression, many nights I used to cry myself to sleep, be it alone, thinking why is this happening to me, is this happening to anyone else, is, will this situation ever end? I, I had suicidal thoughts many times. I just couldn't handle it anymore, was, everything in my life is just going downhill. After one day I was walking at the market, a member of the Universal Church invited me to their service on Sunday. I went there and that first service I felt a great change, like it was something I couldn't explain. I used to attend the service Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays and gradually everything started to fade away, the depression began. I couldn't feel sad anymore, I was just happy all the time. I had fewer and fewer anxiety attacks. So I'm at this point, I haven't had one like in about five months now. After attending the meetings, I was told by the pastor about the chain of prayer. And I started to attend Wednesdays, Fridays and Sundays, the main services. I put into practice what I was told and I saw many changes in my life. No more depression, no more anxiety attacks. And during my perseverance, I found peace. Amisha today is a completely different person. My life has been transformed in many ways. I'm at peace with myself. I'm happy. I'm completely delivered. I no longer have depression and anxiety. And God has done so much for me. My advice that I have to my fellow young people that are looking at my testimony right now and many other persons is that if you're in a situation like mine, if you've been through the things that I've been through, I just want to let you know that you're not alone. And if you're going through it right now, I advise you 
So go to the nearest universal church in your area and seek counseling with the pastor and explain your situation like I did to him and believe, follow the steps that you're told, do what you're told and your life will be transformed. This is your UCKG timetable, helping you to make a new beginning. Mondays, a meeting focused on achieving more in your financial life. Tuesdays, prayers for healing. Wednesdays, a meeting teaching you to develop in your spiritual life. Thursdays, a special prayer for the family. Friday, a service for your spiritual deliverance. Sundays, reconnect with God, the main meeting for your spiritual strength.